food. Any food today? No food? Have you had um, milk? Anyone had milk? Vitamins? So anything that, I'm going to give you a fun tip of the day. Okay, breakfast. Breakfast. When, when do you think breakfast is? When is breakfast for you? When is breakfast? Ring over. When is breakfast? The first thing you eat? Ooh, you're right, Diamond. Did you know? Did you know? That breakfast is called breakfast because it is when you break, yes, break your fast. Break. So, all of you ate at least dinner last night, I hope. All right. When was the last time you ate last night? You want to know what time you ate last night? Me either, Riley. But I actually do it very intentionally. Five o'clock. I think I stopped eating around seven or eight. <laughs> Gummy bear. Yes. So what you really did, if you stop eating after dinner and don't eat till typically lunchish time, you actually do what we call intermittent fasting. Did you know that? Maybe you don't do it intentionally. But the very first thing you eat after dinner and after you sleep, you're not, you know, you've stopped eating. That is a fasting period, whether you're doing it intentionally or not. When you're not putting food in your body, that is a time that you call fasting. All right? Whenever you wake up, um, like if I put creamer or sugar in my coffee, I would technically break my fast. You can make see my coffee. I'm not going to spill it all over the computer trying. But my I drink black coffee with stevia because I don't intentionally don't want it to break my fast. All right, it's a part of digestion. We're going to talk about that today. It is Tuesday. Standing with 2.11. If you left before the end of class yesterday, this quiz disappeared from the classroom. So you don't have to do it. All right. Woo. Yes, isn't that neat? That's why it's called breakfast because breakfast, rather, no matter when you eat it, breaks your fast from when you, from when, um, Fast it over there. Super cool tip. Thank everybody today. All right. Today, these are our objectives. Who can read them? Who's in the house and we use your mic? I love candy and I have a sweet. No readers today? Sure. Yay! The ultimate, what is the ultimate goal of digestion? Where does digestion begin? How do enzymes help with digestion? <laughs> Thank you, David. Are we skipping some lessons? I do not think so. You didn't, did miss a couple last week that you, I posted videos for in the announcement when I was out. All right. So that may be where you're talking about. I'm not quite sure. If you have something that you would like to go over that you think we didn't hit in class, you can do that. We went back to last week and did dichotomous keys yesterday. The dichotomous keys was a two lesson thing. So dichotomous keys started last week. We finished it this week. Now we're going into digestion. All right, so we're going to do digestion today and tomorrow. Sound good? In the, are you asking about where the lessons are in the content? Yeah. 
I am in my car because I am going to an appointment. <laughs> right after this. So I'm peeking in here. I'm checking out that content question really quick. Although sometimes I do go to my car for a quiet place. Oh, actually, I'm looking here. Protus, virus, and some of these things are uh, things we pretty much already covered in class. All right, so you're going to, like, what is a eukaryote versus a prokaryote? We've done that. Viruses is a small lesson. Protus fungi, those will be just one page read throughs. So we'll hit, we'll hit the highlights. Okay, so some of those, like I said, dichotomy. Is a bunch of that. We're going to hit the concepts that are the most challenging. Um, yes, Kaden, we do look so cute. So let's look at this today. So, how do you, what do you think about when you hear the word digestion and eating? What do you think? What are words that pop to your mind? Digestion and eating. Constipation, <laughs> spit. What else? Jaden, <laughs> you're cracking me up. Hemorrhoids. Yes, something that happens. What else? Digestion. Intestines. Literally, I want everybody to put one in chat. Kaden's working hard. Stomach, food. If there's no wrong answer, what do you think about when you think of digestion? What's the first word that pops in your head? Food stuff, nutrients, breaking down. Sarah, Isaiah, Madison, Brianna's with me, Caden's with me, Izzy, Kinsley, and Diamond, and Peyton. The rest of you, are you just turning me on and walking away from your table? <laughs> Liver. There's Jared with food. I'm going to start calling all y'all out that haven't put anything in chat. I want to know you're alive. Here's Maria. I knew someone would say poo. I don't know why I kind of think of that too. Food. There's Brit and then Shania. Good. Good. We all food. The goal of digestion is actually not excretion, which is a lot of what we think about. Um, and a lot of you think about the input, the food, and the output, right? The input and the output, what we want to maybe wrap our minds around it and transfer our thoughts to is what is the ultimate goal of digestion and it being what our body can absorb. Absorption. Everybody type absorb. A weird word, right? It sounds funny. And when you think about when you think about digestion. All right, this is hard. How your body absorbs what you put in it, right? Not necessarily what you put in it and what comes out, but what you what stays in, what stays in, because the input and output are actually different processes, right? And the end goal of all of this is to get C6H12O6. What is this? It's the chemical formula for something you know a non-scientific name for. What is C6H12O6? Almost, Madison, you're on the right. Yep. Glucose. All right, this Everybody's 
Sugar, sugar. It's all about taking your food that you put in your body, digesting it, and the ultimate goal is to get energy. Right? Yeah, you knew it. Remember, we did that whole thing on cellular respiration how our body takes the food and takes them to all the cells in every single part of our body. And it breaks that food apart and makes through either photosynthesis or cellular respiration in our mitochondria this C6H1206 to make ATP. You got this. So there are two different parts of our digestive system. All right? Two different parts. Ah, good question. Riley, type yes or no if I can bring that up in chat. If not, I are in my lesson. But that's part of it. We're going to go there right now, and I have that issue sometimes too. Um, so what happens is when, as we put food into our mouth, it goes on our esophagus. Everybody feel your esophagus. You have one for air and one for food. All right? When it goes into our mouth, what is the first thing that starts the digestive process? Guesses. Here's Jaina. Ooh, look at you, Shania. You got, you're pulling out the fancy words. Kind of, yes. What's the first part of the digestive? Ooh, I like the way you're thinking, Isaiah. You're, you're right there. Almost. Oh, you're all right there. It does start with an S. It's a four letter word. Very non scientific. S T. Yes, Chris pulled out the fancy word, saliva, your spit. Did you know that your spit has digestive enzymes in it, that when the, you start touching food, the enzymes that are on you, in your mouth, actually start the digestive process. What else in your mouth starts the digestive process? Not chemically. Physically. Ooh, your tongue. Yeah, Brianna, that's why it melts in your mouth. Yes, Mary Lee, teeth. Teeth. Your teeth are the physical component, and your spit, the saliva, is your first chemical component. All right, because the enzymes and acidity in your spit that break, start breaking down the food you put in your mouth. Your taste. Buds um, are kind of like an adaptive palate that help you to your nutrition. You could do a whole lesson on taste buds. Because the healthier you eat, your taste buds actually can change, believe it or not. A whole lesson. <laughs> All right, so our digestion has physical components, right? Like you can touch them. Everybody give your teeth a little tap. As physical components and chemical components. Those chemicals, I mean, when we talk about chemicals, glucose that we're making in our body is a chemical. We're not just talking about like hard, toxic chemicals that you might think of, okay? But the chemicals in our body and, and one that aids in digestion would start in our mouth with our spit or our saliva, all right? As you go down through the digestive system, you are going to um, have different physical and chemical parts, all right? The next part that you're going to send your food down is through your throat, through the esophagus. Where is your esophagus? Through your, um, yeah, your esophagus to your what? What's the next part? Where's our food dumped from our mouth to our throat to our, where are we headed? Stomach. 
Perfect. So let's look at this diagram, digestive enzymes. Our stomach is like a swimming pool for our food. <laughs> it is a swimming pool of digestive enzymes. All right, our stomach is a swimming pool of digestive enzymes. And what happens is, what those the top of your stomach is, is to take whole pieces like this and get them torn apart. Take whole pieces and get them torn apart. Right? Yes. So let's look at this next diagram. We started here. Chomps them with our physical teeth. We have the salivary gland that actually produces our saliva, okay? Which starts to eat our food, comes down our esophagus, and it dumps into our stomach, all right? It dumps into our stomach where our stomach is responsible for tearing things apart. Right? So the stomach's job is to pull things apart. And then we're going to go into the small and large intestine. And I saw someone up here. I saw someone up here mention that. The small and large intestine. What do you think the time is once we get our food broken down? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, it, it is higher up than you think. I have a um, a condition called acid reflux occasionally, and what will happen is the acidity in my stomach when I eat something that is like um, acidic. I went robot. My back. Okay. So the, down here, yeah, isn't that crazy? Everybody's having these moments. So when we have acid reflux, it's when our stomach gets irritated and the stomach acid actually comes into our esophagus. The top part of our esophagus actually creates what we talk about like as heartburn. It's not really your heart. It is your stomach acid that actually that breaks down that food that's coming into your esophagus and it's very acidic because its job is to break that food apart and when it comes into your esophagus it starts kind of tearing apart that inside all right so the the job of our mouth our teeth our spit and our Stomach are to break things apart. The job of your intestines, guys, then is to absorb. Right? We just talked about digestion. Everybody type absorb again. And how we think about things going in and things coming out. But the job of the intestine is absorption. All right. It's kind of like a um Lazy River. Have you ever been on a lazy river? Yes, right? Okay, so a lazy river is like when you hop in an inner tube and you float down and you just you're kind of at the mercy of the current, right? Your food kind of does that through, then once it's broken into little tiny pieces, parts, micro pieces, that it goes through the intestines, and your intestines are going to absorb it, all right? It's going to go 
remember how we talked about the movement of molecules through a um, the movement of molecules through a cellular membrane? Remember that? Let me draw a picture. Yeah. There you go. All right, so here is the intestine. All right, here's our little intestine. So what happens is the food particles, where they're little, a bunch of little dots, we're going to bunch of little dots, 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 the concentration on the inside of this intestine is bigger, has, there's more nutrients on the inside than there is on the outside, all right? And this is the bloodstream. This is the bloodstream. And what happens is that those nutrients diffuse from the intestine into your bloodstream. And that bloodstream, where does the bloodstream go? Where does the bloodstream go in your body? Good. Your heart, where else? Thank you, Caden. Yes, it goes everywhere. All right, so it's like the bloodstream is kind of like your UPS or FedEx, all right? It's like FedEx. It's delivering the nutrients to your whole body. So you've got your, your food that's coming through the intestine, and as it travels through the intestine, it diffuses out into the bloodstream. I did. It diffuses into the bloodstream, which is like the, the delivery system to your whole body. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Let me ask my other thing. Hi, you were right on time. How are we on time? Someone want to give me a time check? Are you doing okay? What are the smiley faces? Don't make the holler when it is 9 10. Can someone stop me? Because I get so excited about this stuff. Perfect. So our intestines are going to pull out all of this stuff. And the very end part of the digestive process is basically getting rid of all of those things that our body did not want, right? Which is going to be the excretion process down here at the anus. Um, I believe we should have a unit review for this. Yeah, why not? All right. Now, there, you can see there's a lot of other components, but today we're just kind of looking at the overall picture of digestion. All right, let's look at, I want you to do this. Give me, you are able to draw this. Use your pointers. I want you to point at a physical, a physical of digestion. Good. The mouth is a physical part. Your teeth is a physical part. Your anus is a physical part. Your intestine, yes, is a physical part. Yes, your stomach is a physical part. How about your esophagus? It is a physical part. 
Good. Now, we didn't talk about your liver and gallbladder. These are part of your digestive process, so I would say they are a physical part as well. What they do is they make sure um, they are like a reservoir for anything that is harmful to your body. They're like a detoxification plant. They try to get all the yuck out of the food that you're eating or something that might be dangerous to your body. It's kind of a filter for that. Okay. Good. All right. What would be something that is a chemical part of the digestive process? A chemical part. You might have to type in chat. Yes. Got people pointing to their cell, berry glands. Perfect. That is a chemical part. Well, yes. And someone is also pointing to the stomach. The acid in your stomach. Perfect, Brianna. Those enzymes in your stomach are a huge part of digestion. If we didn't have those enzymes working for us to break that food down, could we absorb it in our intestines? Could we absorb it if our stomach didn't do its job of breaking it apart into fine pieces? No. Perfect. Thank you, Kaden. Um, we're almost done. One last question. I want you to tell me what these things have in common. Broccoli. Bananas. Apples. Nuts. Oats. They are nutrients. They are, yep, no protein. Oh, I like the way Isaiah's, you all are looking at the nutrition, not proteins. There's, it starts with an F, F. Ooh, not fat, but that's a good guess. Not sugar, F, I. It's a nutrient we do. Ah, yes, Madison, it's fiber. Fiber. All right, so fiber is something that you have to kind of be intentional about putting in your body. Because you want to know what fiber does for you? Does anyone know what fiber does for your digestive system? Fiber is difficult for your stomach to, yes, you're on it, Jared. It's difficult for your stomach to digest. And what it does is it goes through your intestines. And I want you to think about um, your lazy rivers again. All right. Think about your lazy river that has a really strong pump that is pushing the current and making the current strong. Right. And then I want you to think about a lazy river that you kind of had to like, have you ever had to actually like sit in the tube and kind of kick your way through it because the water current in the lazy river is not working yet? Well, you know, different, different of us have different ones of us have different types of chemical compositions in our intestines. But what the fiber does is it makes, when you have fiber, it makes sure that pump is strong. All right, it helps push the process through your intestines. Let's just talk about poop for a minute. All right, you should be pooping at least once a day. If you have a really good digestive system, every time you eat, you should you should poop. Legitimately. I don't know too many people that for every meal they eat, they have that many bowel movements. Okay? But if you don't, if you are only going once a week, guys, we need to introduce some fiber to this digestive system. What fiber does is it helps everything move through the intestines, all right? But if you're not eating enough fiber, you might consider something like a metamucil. So your doctor, if you're worried about this. No, that is not how Crohn's starts. But we can talk about that tomorrow, I promise. 
Um, I was tested for Crohn's. All right. My cousin has Crohn's. It's a, uh, an inherited genetic disorder. Okay. But Crohn's, yes. But what happens is you definitely, like, think about it, guys. You really want your food sitting in here all week in your intestines? Yeah. I mean, Google can help, but Google can also be scary. <laughs> so we can talk about it tomorrow. All right. We don't want our food sitting in here all week long because that is not good for this excretory system. You know? Which we can finish our digestion talk tomorrow. Thanks, baby. The first thing you say is adios. I feel a little neglected. So if you feel like you're having those issues, eat a banana today. Eat some apple today. Eat some granola today. I know. It is time. Thank you for reminding me. All right, I have an appointment that I need to run to. You have a class that you need to run to. I'm glad this it was interesting and y'all were so engaging today. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow as we finish up our week talking about digestion. Thank you, Kaden. Have a great day, guys. Your heart, you make my heart so happy. It's a great way to start my day. Thanks, Riley. <laughs> Lowry. Thanks, Riley. You too. See you guys.